Hey Leo, Avery here, and I'm going to read you the story of Rack Shack and Benny. Once upon a time, there was a chocolate factory. But not just any chocolate factory. No, this was a desert chocolate factory, home of the desert chocolate bunny. Now, Mr. Desert, Nebby K. Desert, could be a little mean sometimes. He wasn't a bad man, but every now and then he'd get a little confused. Why his chocolate bunnies were selling so well, I think he'd gotten a bit big for his britches. And that was saying something because his britches were pretty big to start out with. Mr. Nezer had three boys working in his chocolate factory named Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Of course, no one could remember those names, so we just called them Rack, Shack, and Benny. Then came with some other boys and girls that Mr. Nezer brought in to help make chocolate bunnies. Yep, they were away from their parents for the first time. Things were going pretty well until one day when Mr. Nezer made an announcement. He said, Well, the kids were thrilled. They loved chocolate, and now they could eat as much as they wanted. Rack and Benny started eating buddies too. Then Jack had something to say. He told them, Rack replied, Shank told him about a song his mother used to sing to him a long time ago. It was a song about always remembering the things our parents teach us. Shaq said, Well, Rack and Benny agreed not to eat any more bunnies. When Mr. Dazzler came in, he found everyone lying on the floor with tummy aches. Everyone except Rack, Shaq, and Benny. Everybody else is lying down. Mr. Dazzler said, Benny asked, Reply Nezer's helper, Mr. Lund. The boys were very excited about their new jobs. They had done what they thought was right, even though no one else was doing it, and it paid off. But boy, were they in for a surprise when they got to Mr. Nezer's office the next day. In his office, Mr. Nezer told Rack, Shack, and Benny how much he loved the Nezer chocolate bunny. He told them how he wanted everyone to love the bunny. So he had decided to build a giant chocolate bunny for everyone to bow down to. He told them, Shaq said, Mr. Dezer replied, Well, the bunny song was full of terrible things that Rack, Shack, and Benny knew were wrong. Mr. Desert told them that if they didn't sing it, he was going to throw them in the furnace, where the bad bunnies went. What should they do? If they stand up for what they believe in now, they'll be in a heap of trouble. That afternoon, Mr. Desert brought everyone outside to meet the giant bunny. He said, the music started and everyone bowed. Then Mr. Lunt noticed something. He said, Mr. Desert took a closer look. It was Rack, Shack, and Benny. He repeated, Rack, Shack, and Benny did not sing. Their friend Laura was shocked. She begged. Still, Rack, Shack, and Benny did not sing. Mr. Desert shouted again. 
Finally, Shaq started singing. But he wasn't singing the bunny song. No, he was singing the song his mother taught him. Rack and Benny joined in and they sang the song together. When they finished, Mr. Desert was smiling. He said, Laura looked on in horror as the guards dragged her friends away. What could she do? Back in the factory, Mr. Desert put Rack, Shack, and Benny on the conveyor belts that led to the furnace. He asked them one more time. The boys thought hard. Then they explained to Mr. Nazar that their parents had always taught them to stand up for what they believed in. They also told him that God wanted them to do what was right, and that there was a lot of stuff in that song that was not right. That's why, even though they didn't want to get in trouble, they could not sing that song. Mr. Nazar smiled. He said, Benny was amazed. Mr. Nazar continued, Mr. Nezer pushed a button that sent Rack, Shack, and Benny down the slide towards the furnace. Round and round they went as the glow of the furnace grew brighter. Was this the end? Suddenly, they stopped falling. They hit something, but it wasn't the furnace. Mr. Nezer turned to see what happened, and Laura's truck rose into the air with Rack, Shack, and Benny safely inside. She yelled, Mr. Dezer hollered. Two guards jumped into flying bunny cycles and raced off after Laura. Laura was a good driver. She led the guards into the giant pipes of the factory, twisting and turning as they raced along. One by one, she tricked the guards into going the wrong way, and they fell out of the pipes and into the giant vats of chocolate below. Up ahead, they saw light streaming down the tunnel. That must be the way out. Laura followed the light and flew out of the pipe. But instead of being outside, they were right back where they started, above the furnace with Mr. Desert smiling at them. He said, Mr. Lund pushed a button and two giant arms grabbed Laura's truck and held it tight. Nezer continued, Mr. Lunt pushed another button, and the arms began turning the truck over. He was going to dump them right into the furnace. While no one was looking, Laura jumped out of the truck and disappeared behind a pile of boxes. Rack, Shaq, and Benny were now looking right down into the furnace. Shaq turned to his friends with a worried look on his face. He asked, Just then, the crane's arm shut down. Mr. Desert looked around and saw Laura standing on top of the boxes with the crane's power cord next to her and a crazy look in her eyes. She hollered. The boy smiled at their brave friend, but their smiles faded as the tail of the truck began bending under their weight. Nezer yelled. He was interrupted by a loud crack. The tailgate had broken, and Laura and Mr. Nezer watched as Rack, Shaq, and Benny disappeared into the glowing furnace. <laughs> Mr. Nezer laughed, but then something strange happened. A crackling noise filled the air. Mr. Dezer spun around to see light, streaming down into the furnace, filling the factory with an eerie glow. Mr. Lunt humped up to a window and looked inside. He said, Mr. Dezer was frightened. He mumbled. Said Mr. Lunt, Mr. Dezer was speechless. 
Mr. Lunt looked back into the furnace. He whispered. Now Mr. Nazar realized that God was taking care of Rack Shack and Benny, even in the fiery furnace. Quickly he called the boys out. They hadn't gotten burned at all. Mr. Nazar apologized for trying to make them do things that they weren't supposed to do. He said, Rack Shack and Benny remembered one more thing that their parents taught them, that God always wants us to forgive. forgive they said, And that's the story of Rack Shack and Benny, three boys who learned that if they stood up for what they believed in, God would stand with them. The end.